For a cooking show to stand out from the pack, it really needs an angle. A host engineered for TV helps too. And Guy's Grocery Games combines multiple angles. Here's what you don't know about Guy Fieri's successful shopping and cooking show. If you're a chef who wants to put their cooking skills and creativity to the test on national TV by running around Flavortown to potentially collect $20,000, be prepared to jump through a few hoops. Guy Fieri doesn't just let anybody play his grocery games, and producers of the show put contestants through a pretty rigorous vetting process. Sometimes producers track particular chefs down, and other times chefs reach out to the show. Keith Clinton, the chef de cuisine at Memphis's Erling Jensen The Restaurant, got a call while at work from the show's producer. He told the Memphis Flyer, They just called the restaurant and said, I see you're doing some interesting things on Instagram and Facebook. We're just wondering who's the chef there and what's going on. Chefs interested in being on the show are asked to submit photos of their best dishes and have several Skype and phone interviews with the show's producers. AJ, a New Jersey firefighter who went up against other firefighters on the show, recalled, While it was a long process, it was totally worth it in the end. The one thing contestants won't be required to do during the casting process is come up with a signature catchphrase. Contestant Tracy Sheppo's Chenemy told Delish, they leave that TV magic to Fieri. Being a contestant on Guy's Grocery Games and walking away with a wad of cash is a major win. But being a judge isn't too shabby either. Judge Melissa DeArabian says that filming the show is basically, quote, like going to summer camp, only with way better food. Judges are made welcome by Fieri before they even step on the set, and the Grocery Games host makes sure to include a little flavor from his hometown and show filming location of Santa Rosa, California. Judge Brandy Milloy told Pop Sugar about her first experience as a judge. When I arrived to my hotel, there was a handwritten note from Guy with wine and a basket of fruit welcoming me to the show. I get chills just thinking about it. Talk about feeling welcome. The show's coordinators also make sure to pamper the judges when they arrive on set by stocking their trailers with their favorite foods. Malloy said that she casually mentioned her liking of gummy bears, and when she showed up, there were all sorts of gummy bear varieties waiting for her. When you consider the opportunity to eat meals prepared by creative chefs and a personal trailer with all of your favorite foods, being a judge on the show sounds almost as good as winning grocery games. Guy's Grocery Games is all about speed. From being able to fire off fast answers during the show's culinary quiz game to running around the store for ingredients to whipping up the dish, contestants have to move fast. When it comes down to it, contestants actually spend very little time over the burner cooking. Factor in the lengthy shooting days, and actually cooking is just a small part of the experience. A single episode can take up to 12 hours to shoot. Those who aren't early birds need not apply, because the day begins as early as 5 a.m. Former contestant Deanna Germano told Syracuse.com, The three rounds each consist of 30 minutes, so the chefs are cooking for only about an hour and a half. So what do the other 10 and a half hours of the day look like? A lot of it is waiting around for the judging process and conducting interviews with the producers to relay to show what sort of pressure the chefs are under. Tracy Shepos Chinami said, After you compete, you sit down and do interviews, which can last two or three hours. Cooking up a tasty meal becomes a lot trickier when you're forced to only use ingredients that come from a can. What? We can only use canned food, frozen food, and we can only use seven items? Oh my god. What separates Guy's Grocery Games from similar cooking shows is a little bit of control over the ingredients contestants have. The games portion of the show really tests the culinary prowess of the chefs and often results in some creative dishes. Take the ABC game, for example. Contestants are tasked with cooking up a meal where every ingredient must start with the same one or two letters. Judge G. Garvin said, I love the possibility of pulling out a letter that could really throw you, but makes you think about what you really get. Other games might force competitors to shop using tiny bags instead of carts, or bowl over bottles to ensure they don't have to use undesirable ingredients. These games really force the contestants to think outside the box. Judge Bo McMillan told Food Network, It's just amazing because the beauty of being a chef is the ability, I think, to really adapt and overcome. And when you've set your mind to something, chefs commit to that. 
A big part of what makes Guy's Grocery Games work is the fantastic set. The man behind that creation is set designer Scott Story. Story has been designing TV sets for several decades now. Reality Blurred reports that besides Grocery Games, he's created sets for the show's Big Brother and RuPaul's Drag Race. A similar show that older Guy's Grocery Games fans might remember is the now-defunct game show Supermarket Sweep. Story was the set mastermind on that, too. But the set of Supermarket Sweep wasn't as sophisticated as Grocery Games. Story recalled, Buying fake meat was too expensive, so the production company would just buy real meat. It would sit there, unrefrigerated, for a week. Everything was just rotten because there's no refrigeration. It's just scenery. Story knew that he didn't want that to be the case when designing the set for Guy's Grocery Games. He only had four weeks to build the set, and vendors told him it couldn't be done. But he not only succeeded in creating a near-perfect replica of a functioning grocery store, but did it so well that even food vendors were fooled. Once a potato chip delivery guy showed up to the set and couldn't help but marvel at the set before remarking, no one will shop here, there's no parking. The chefs who appear on the show and the judges that ultimately decide a contestant's fate say that Guy Fieri is genuinely excited about each chef who appears. Deanna Germano told Syracuse.com that her interactions with Fieri were a great experience and described him as not just down-to-earth, but more chef-like than people might give him credit for. Former contestant Tracy Shepos Chinami had a lot of praise for not only Fieri's welcoming manner, but how helpful the host was to her and the other chefs. She told Delish, Before the show, Guy gathered the contestants to remind us we're there to have fun and to show the world who we are as chefs. His role, if you take advantage of it, is to help you in certain ways. I think I asked him to open up a jar. The helpful advice and hands that Fieri lends to the contestants are all part of him, quote, sincerely wanting each person to do their absolute best. Grocery Games judge Brandy Malloy told Pop Sugar. How does one prepare themselves for the onslaught of shopping challenges that await them on Guy's Grocery Games? Well, aside from running around a local supermarket with a stopwatch, preparation is futile. Fieri explained that it's not only the pressure of the TV lights and cameras, but the trials and tribulations of the show can really wreak havoc on a contestant. Fieri said such challenges, such as cooking steak and potatoes using only frozen foods, really throw a chef off their game. For a lot of chefs, including myself, I wouldn't know what to go get out of the frozen food section and make steak and potatoes. You can't just get a Swanson hungry man and cook it up and go steak and potatoes. Grocery Games winner Lindsay Porter told the Edmonton Journal that she had to prepare a noodle dish using frozen chicken fried steak and said the challenge was absolutely awful, probably one of the worst things I've dealt with. While being a highly capable chef is always part of the winning formula, going into the game with a plan just isn't possible. Two-time winner Nicholas Moulton told the Berkshire Eagle, You can't really plan what you do. You have to completely blank out everything because you don't know what they're going to ask you to do. Pieti often sees contestants fall victim to the same mistakes, and some of those mistakes are the same ones that trip contestants up on other cooking shows. I just wish she had transformed the candy cigarette because she just stuck it in the ice cream. Yeah, along with some real cigarettes. <laughs> Fieri told Food Network that he sees chefs routinely get eliminated for things like poor seasoning or adding frivolous garnishes that work against the main dish. Arguably one of the biggest mistakes that can sink contestants is playing it too safe. Using your imagination and being open to completely challenge what defines a dish is a survival skill that both Fieri and winning chef Tracy Shepos Chinami agree on. Chinami told The Daily Meal, You have to make quick culinary decisions and commit to an idea and then execute that idea with little or no time or opportunity to change it. Guy's Grocery Games made its TV debut in an actual working grocery store. The original location of Flavortown was Fields Market in West Hills, California, which carried an impressive 25,000 different items for contestants to use, North Bay Business Journal reports. However, by the end of the first season, the show was in need of a new home closer to Fieri's home base. The production company took over a massive industrial area in Santa Rosa, California, and built a 15,000-square-foot grocery store that has all the bells and whistles a chef could want. Fieri said, The aisles are wider, the lighting is better, so it makes it easier for the chefs to shop and see what's on the shelves. 
Going along with the shelves, the culinary team has stocked and set them up so they're far more shopper-friendly. The set does have 5,000 items fewer than the original Fields Market location, but it has larger kitchens that were built to mimic the feel of a commercial kitchen. An added perk is that chefs can also run over to Equipment Row for any tool that they might need that's not already in their station. Every single item you could want as a chef most likely will be here. The food at Flavortown Supermarket is logged and barcoded in the same way as it would be at any real grocery store, according to set designer Scott Story. But there are some minor differences from a working supermarket in Flavortown. While there are checkout lanes, shoppers on the guy's grocery game set won't find any aisles with pet food and Story notes there's no baby care section. The Flavortown Supermarket's shelves also differ from those you'd find in a regular store. The shelves themselves have lights attached to them to make things easier for the crew. Story said this is primarily Primarily, quote, because the contestants stand looking at the shelves, you can't light them, so we built lighting into all the shelves. Flavortown may have an impressive selection of food, but what happens to all that food after the show? The chefs on Guy's Grocery Games don't even come close to making a dent in the store's massive food selection over the course of an episode, and thankfully, it doesn't go in a dumpster out back. Moving the show's shooting location to Santa Rosa was a blessing for the community because all that food finds its way to different food programs in the area. Just like a normal grocery store, staff comb through the aisles each week to mark what food has been damaged or could be nearing the end of its shelf life. At the end of the season, non-perishables are simply covered with plastic until shooting picks back up. The selected items are then pulled and divided up to go to different food programs in the community. Food that's not fit for human consumption often finds its way to farms to be fed to livestock. In total, Food Network says nearly 30,000 pounds of food ends up being donated every season. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite cooking shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.